Based on some reviews on YouTube and also based on a campaign here in Switzerland together with Swisscom and a smartphone manufacturer called Oppo, actually located in China like Huawei, I stumbled into this phone here and uh, I want to try this out now. This could be strong competition for Apple, Samsung, Huawei and there are already some reviews out there who claim that the Oppo Reno, and this is the 5G version if you look here, that the Oppo Reno is the stronger phone compared to the P30 Pro and compared to the S10, S10 Plus and of course also compared to the Apple iPhone. So let's get this unboxed. Let's see what's in the box and then also in the next uh, couple of weeks let's do some uh, test footage in terms of photos, videos, you know, playing with the camera like I did in the past with other smartphones and also posting on YouTube uh, how this is playing out. So let's open this up. Uh, let's get some tool here. Let's see what we have. Always careful with a sharp knife and then uh, putting this aside and uh, it's nicely sealed so it's fresh. I bought this actually uh, from Swisscom yesterday. I was in town uh, looking around and I saw the phone in uh, on display there in the shop and I bought it from Swisscom and if you look in YouTube and in uh, you know Swisscom campaigns you will find this collaboration so this is really the international version of the phone. There are also some Chinese versions of the phone which will not give you the right network coverage in the way you want it. But this is the fully fledged version for the European or let's say the Swiss market. And uh, I decided to buy it because I like in particular the style and the design of the phone. So let's see what we have here. Okay. Actually, if you look at the package and uh, if you go back maybe five years, Apple was always superior in terms of packaging gadgets. And Samsung caught up nicely and then other manufacturers caught up too. But this is really, this is really very, very posh what you see here. And uh, this is not at all lagging behind between the mainstream manufacturers we have in the US or in Europe. And they also all produce anyway somewhere in uh, Asia Pacific. So it's a big box. I was a bit surprised when I got the box because when you see the phone on display, it's uh, not as big as the box, of course. So let's get this out. So this is the phone. I show you the design in a moment because I think they managed to get some texture on the phone in this aluminum uh, alloy body, which is superior to what I've seen before. Uh, and uh, I don't think this is as magnetic to fingerprints like the backside of Huawei phones, Samsung phones or Apple's iPhone. So what I forgot is we should have looked at the back of the box. Let's uh, get this close to the camera here. And you see here Oppo Reno 5G. And then uh, you see here also this is assembled in China, which is not unusual. As I said, most Western world manufacturers assemble their phones in China too. Designed by Oppo, so it seems to be their own creation. What is important is the network coverage here. So you have GSM, VCDMA, LTE, all kinds of bands on networks. And as I said, be careful if you order this from overseas because there are some versions which will work somehow with your SIM card, but which are not manufactured and designed for the international market in Europe, the US, Canada, and in all those places. And this one here is the international version. It will probably be, I guess, impossible to find any network anywhere in the world where this phone will not be supported. You also see here the color of the phone. It's called Ocean Green. And I like that color very, very much. I'll show you in a moment how it looks like. And I think, uh, as I mentioned before, they managed to get a texture uh, of this uh, phone in a way that if you Use it a lot with your fingers, it will not be magnetic to fingerprints, which I think is good. We'll talk about the specs of the phone later on, but this one has uh, a RAM of 8 gigabytes, which is good. Many phones have only 6 gigabytes. Actually, some versions you get from overseas, they come only with 6 gigabytes. The international version has 8. And the storage capacity you have to store all your content is 256 gigabytes. So before looking at the phone itself, let's look into the box, what else they provide and what gets shipped with the phone. So 
The first here is a case and I tried to get this close to the camera. So you see this also has a certain texture. It's almost a little bit like rubber. It will never get slippy for sure. And also you see here, I can touch this as often as I want. It's not keeping the fingerprints, which is good. I should say I hate fingerprints because I, I think they make phones smudgy and they don't look good. And then you always have to use these cleaning towels to get them in good shape again. So that's not good. Let's put this aside. We also have headphones here. The headphones repeat the color of the phone itself. There is a green boundary here. Um, I typically do not use headphones out of the box. I have my AirPod 2s, I have Samsung AirBuds, and I like to have them wireless anyway. I don't know what these are, but I typically keep them in box because if you later on, after half a year, when you want to change your box, you sell them, uh, then uh, people like it if the headphones out of the box have not been used before. We have a charger here. It's a nice brick. It's not too big. It has a square shape if you look at it from the top. So it will consume some space in your bag, but it's small compared to what you get sometimes with other phones. Um, let's see if we can get the capacity here close. Let's see if we can zoom this a little bit. Now it's better. So this is five volt, four ampere, 50, 60 Hertz made uh, for all different kinds of power connections, 100 to 240 volt on the input and uh, it will probably be a strong charger. I don't know if that phone has the same quick charging capabilities as the Huawei and Samsung phones, but we'll find out. Let's put this aside. And then we have, this is a USB-C cable here. The USB-C goes into the phone and USB 3.1, the classical one, to be connected to your computer and of course to the charger here. So nothing unusual on that front. So now let's look at the phone. Let's get this uh, protector here away. So this is the phone. It's a very large screen. And the first thing which catches my attention is, so this is the upright position now. We have three cameras here. I'll come to coverage of the lenses and the capabilities later on in the spec section. But what is eye catching here? There seems to be no knock. And the reason for that is that when I got myself introduced to the phone a little bit, I think uh, it's pretty clear that they have a mechanism to pop up a camera here. So you don't waste space on your display for a camera, which is then a not free phone, which will be the future. I'm sure about that because if people watch movies on full screen, they are sick and tired to have this sparing out here for camera sensors uh, and all of that. This is the texture I was speaking about and if I swipe with my finger over it, you see it's not getting smudgy, which is nice. It's a matte finish and uh, I guess this will be resistant to fingerprints, but you can use it in the case anyway in order to protect it because it would not be the first time that a smartphone is falling down in my case and then uh, you're always very happy if it doesn't break. Maybe one last thing before I boot this up is the build quality. I tried to get this close to the camera, but if you look here, this is really, really well built. It's absolutely solid. It doesn't lag behind in terms of build quality. If you go through the boundaries here, uh, when we compare this to Samsung, Apple or Huawei, it's really a premium phone. Look at that. There is nothing to complain about. Quite nice. Okay, let's uh, start and boot this up. Let's set it up. Let's see what the uh, user interface looks like. As far as I know, it's based on Android 9 and then there is a proprietary uh, layer on top of it coming from Oppo. So we'll see how this all works and uh, then in a moment I'll be back. So on the left hand side here you see the Huawei P30 Pro, on the right hand side the Oppo Reno 5G and I started to clone my content from the Huawei into the uh, Oppo phone here. Uh, unfortunately, from a software perspective, it was not straightforward because the Oppo comes with clone software and the Huawei comes with clone software, but these two apps somehow were absolutely not capable to communicate with each other. 
So what I had to do is I had to go on to the Huawei. I had to use a link provided by Oppo and then I followed that link, downloaded the um, APK file, installed it manually on the Huawei P30 Pro and in this way got the phones uh, ready to connect. You have to grant an exception on Android phones because the APK file is not from the Google Play Store and this is for good reasons. It can create serious security issues if you start downloading apps from uncertified websites. So make sure you take these one-off exceptions back later on in the settings and that only apps are allowed to be installed on your phone if they come certified from the Google Play Store. Now, if you look at the phone here, um, all my apps and uh, the corresponding data to the app seems to be transferred. So 221 out of 221 apps are transferred. My photos are transferred. So we have 589 photos here. My call log list is transferred. My text messages are already on the Oppo. Contacts are fully transferred. Documents still missing. Music still missing. Music is just uh, not used by me because I use Google Play Music. And uh, then on the videos, you see 55 videos transferred out of 125. Progress is 65%. I'll check later on if my content is secured, stored on the Oppo. And as I said before, if you have to grant exceptions in installing an app out of the Google Play Store, make sure you take back these exceptions later on. I'm here briefly on the website of oppo.com and want to walk you through the specs of the phone. Dimensions you see here, but I come to the diagonal of the screen in a moment. The phone is available in two colors, jet black and ocean green. As I said in the unboxing part of the video, the ocean green is a very nice choice if you want to go for that phone. The weight is 215 gram, so it's a heavy phone, but not unusually heavy when we compare it to its competitors. And you get some specs here on the processor. So this is a Snapdragon processor from Qualcomm. And you also have a separate GPU for graphical processing. And this is absolutely up to date. So it's a very powerful computer basically you have in that phone. Battery capacity 4065 milliampere. This should easily walk me through a full working day, but I have to try this out first before I draw my conclusions. And then on RAM, 8 gigabytes I mentioned at the unboxing part and 256 gigabytes on the SSD if you want to call it an SSD in terms of storage in the phone. You can also expand this by micro SD cards and then your options are, you know, multiple. I decided for a 256 gigabyte micro SD card and included it in the phone slot already. 6.6 inch is the display diagonal and that means it is a large display. And we also do not have that knob, so nothing is disrupting the rectangle finish of the screen when you look at it. I think that's quite nice. Resolution is high and 387 PPI means that it will also be very, very sharp. And screen ratio 93.1% means that Oppo did not waste a lot of space in terms of bezels. So the phone has thin bezels and you have an AMOLED display here, which means that you get high contrast you get nice colors, very saturated, and you also get if pixels are black, no power consumption required, which is good from a power saving perspective. There are three camera sensors on the back of the phone. The main camera has 48 megapixels with an aperture of f1.7. People who watched my video on the Huawei P30 Pro and how to translate an aperture on a small phone sensor into a full frame equivalent they might have the impression already and the educated guess that an aperture of f1.7 in a full frame equivalent is more comparable to an f8.0 in a full frame camera and that is the case here too. The um, wide angle lens has 8 megapixels and an aperture of f2.2. This is more or less give or take comparable to what we have on the Huawei P30 Pro um, and the tele lens has 13 megapixels and an aperture of f3.0. All in, the aperture values here, they differ slightly from the Huawei P30 Pro, but they are not completely off. So we will have comparable situation when it comes to taking photos and shooting videos. The um, selfie camera has 16 megapixel and there are certain beauty functions enabled on the phone. And I'm not a selfie person. I told this people many times in my videos, but I probably briefly try it out for a moment and uh, demonstrate how this works because there is some mechanics built in into the phone, which makes the front camera extremely interesting.
The camera app from my first glimpse I think is not as sophisticated on, as on Huawei P30 Pro but much more sophisticated than what you get on an iPhone XS Max and we are going to cover that. The 10 times telephoto or the 10 times zoom is in the same way as on the Huawei P30 Pro a hybrid zoom so it uses a combination of digital magnification and optical magnification and optical zoom to establish a 10 times zoom. And of course, this is never as good as a 10 times optical zoom, but much better than a digital zoom. And by the way, you can go up to 60 times zoom, enhancing the digital capabilities of magnification in comparison to only 50 times on the Huawei P30 Pro. And I'll see what that means when I start comparing the camera features of those two smartphones. The front camera can shoot in 1080p on the video side at 30 frames per second. That's plenty of headroom for nice selfie videos. And then on the main camera, you get 4K at 60 and 30 frames and some other options. And we also will try this out later. Connectivity is huge. I mentioned this in the unboxing part of the video. You will have a hard time finding any place on planet Earth where these bands are not supported. So this should be nice. And uh, on the sensor side, you have the usual sensors here. And on the uh, box side, we already showed what was in the box, so I think we can conclude here. The only thing I want to mention is that this is an Android 9 phone and Oppo has their own proprietary overlay, which is called Color OS 6. And this is also described here on the um, website of Oppo. I think it is a very minimalistic overlay. Uh, but there are some additional functions which come on top of usual Android functionality. And if I find time in the next weeks, I'm going to review this too. In front of me on the table, I have now here the Huawei P30 Pro and here the Oppo Reno 5G. And you see here some flickering on the Huawei and uh, this is typically coming from a situation where the camera in the video mode, I'm filming here with the iPhone XS Max in 4K at 30 frames per second, is not getting along with the refresh rate of the screen. So don't get distracted by that. It's an artifact and I switch off the Huawei in a moment anyway because I want to focus in this video on the Oppo phone. Um, if you look at the um, Oppo, there is an in-display fingerprint scanner here. So if I place my thumb on it, it's spot on very quickly recognizes my finger and that I'm the person I'm supposed to be in terms of entering the phone. And if you compare both phones side by side, both have beautiful screens. And uh, I didn't even adjust yet brightness or color schemes on the uh, Oppo here. So I think uh, the displays are absolutely comparable when it comes to quality, resolution, sharpness and color richness. Let's switch the Huawei now off. Somehow, and this is interesting, uh, my iPhone camera is picking up a little bit of flickering here on the Oppo screen, but not as much as on the Huawei P30 Pro. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to demonstrate. What you find here is if you don't have a knob and if the rectangular shape of the display is not disrupted by a knob, then the selfie camera must hide somewhere. And you also see here that there is no flashlight at the back of this phone. And uh, if you would look at the um, Huawei, for instance, you have the flashlight just here. So also the flashlight must hide somewhere. And uh, I want to demonstrate this briefly. So if I slide down here, in the same way as on other Android phones, there is a button here saying flashlight. And the flashlight will now activate a hidden mechanism in the top bezel of the phone. And I want to demonstrate this now quickly. Just have a look. I push it. And et voila, it slides out. How nice is that? So here is the torch or the flashlight on the back. And here actually is the selfie camera, which has 16 megapixels as we covered when we briefly looked into the spec sheet. And I can do this all day. Just look at this mechanism. I tried to get this very close. Sliding in a very tiny noise of almost like a small motor is coming up here. I tried to catch this. Listen to it. So quite nice and uh, I hope you could hear that uh, tiny sound. Um, what interested me of course when I decided for the phone is how reliable is that mechanism and how long will it last? How durable is it? 
And first of all, the quality is nice. You see, this is really completely in the top bezel. So there is nothing where you could get stuck with your finger. Um, and in the spec sheet, um, Oppo claims that this mechanism is good for at least 200,000 slides in and out, which is a lot and is enough for the lifetime of a phone. Uh, because you typically don't have a smartphone longer than one or two years and then you give it away a second hand and buy a new one. And so this will hopefully last for the full lifetime of that phone as long as I have it. On the um, OS, as I said, I have to dive into it. I had no time to do this yet. I might come back with another video. What I will do for sure is coming back with more thoughts on the camera and how this compares to the Samsung S10 Plus to the Huawei P30 Pro and to the iPhone XS Max, all phones I know very well, where I did a lot of photography and uh, video footage with it. And uh, I will do my comparisons. I will draw my conclusions for the time being. I want to end the video here. And uh, I hope you like that unboxing and also sharing with you the specifications of the Oppo Reno 5G. I think this is a tough competition for Huawei, tough competition for Samsung and Apple. And if Oppo is continuing in their speed in terms of bringing new innovation to the market, we'll hear a lot about that manufacturer, which again comes from China. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Please share your comments and thoughts with me in the comment section below the video. And you will hear again from me on that Oppo Reno 5G in the next couple of weeks with more footage on video photo, more thoughts on the proprietary operating system overlay on top of Android 9.0 and also on the way I liked or disliked the handling of that phone in general.